Okay, so let's put down the date. Um, let's see, what is it? One, no, it's two, six, no, two, seven. Yes. No, two, six, 17. Okay, common core standard. It's going to be the same one we've been working with. G for geometry, CO for congruence, and number nine is basically we're going to be using proofs to prove theorems about lines and angles. That's our common core. Not that anybody cares about common core, but the governor does, all right? We care about common core because it's what we're going to be tested on, so we're probably better. So this is what we call flow chart proof. It's different. And the reason I like the flow chart is the answers are here. They really are. I mean, the answers, the proof are right here. All we got to do is just dissect this and put it into a two-column proof. So we're going to take what's here. These are The answers are right here. We just got to figure out what it's trying to say and put it into a two-column proof. So let's start right there with a the two-column proof. Okay, we know statements. Reasons. I like these. I mean, these aren't bad because really, truthfully, the answer to this proof is hiding in here. We just have to take a look at it and figure out what's going on, okay? So let's do what we always do. Step one. Let's do it, okay? Um, let's go to our given. So AB is congruent to CD, okay? I got that. Proof AC is congruent to BD. So they really are going to try and prove common segment theorem. Okay, we can always, we can go straight to it, but they're going to prove it, okay? They're going to do it in a flow chart manner. So let's see how they do it, right? So they kind of give us step one. Step one is sitting right here. They go, all right, step one, put A, B congruent to C, D, and they even tell us the reason. Look at that. So here's our statement in the shaded circle, and here's the reason right below it. So step one, A, B is congruent to C, D. And the reason for that is given, right? Everybody knows that. Now, in the flow chart, they give us the second step. And they even give us the reason. Isn't that nice? So these aren't too bad at all. It's right there. So step one, because we use your arrow flowing down, step two's got to be AB is equal to CD. And they even give us a reason. Definition of congruent segments, okay? Definition of uh, congruent segments. Okay, then the flow chart goes two directions. So, since it could go straight to here or straight down, I'm going to take what's above it. I'm going to say this BC is equal to BC, reflexive property. So we're going to say that. I'm going to go to step three. I'm going to say BC is equal to BC, and that's the reflexive property. So the flow chart gives us that, and then you can see the arrow comes down to the next step. So this step four has to be step four, right? Because all the arrows are going to that. So the step four is just to put that AB plus BC is equal to BC plus CD, all right? <coughs> and of course, the cool thing about the flow chart it just tells us the answer. It's right there. That is the reason. Step four is addition property of congruency, okay? of equals. P-O-E, addition property, or P-O-E, PO, huh? Addition property. Okay, then the chart goes up to here, okay? Then we'll flow down to here. So then we are going to put this A-B plus B-C equals A-C. So A-B plus B-C equals the full thing. That's just segment addition. So A-B plus B-C equals A-C and Let's put the other piece of that in there too. Let's put both part, the BC plus the CD equals BD. Reason? They tell us segment addition. But don't you like these? These are easy. We don't have to do any work. They're doing the work for us. So then segment addition posture. Okay. Okay, then they're gonna do a substitution because they are basically saying the same thing. So we're going to say that this is equal to this, AC is equal to BD. And they say this by substitution. 
See how the flow chart goes to here, and then we'll have it done in a second. AC is equal to BD, and that's going to be substitution. <coughs> and last step, there it is. They just tell it for us. They just, it's just AC is congruent to BD by definition of congruency. Hey, definition of congruency. So I'm going to go AC is congruent to BD. Step seven, definition of congruency. Now, the good and bad. The good part about the flow chart is you don't even have to know what you're doing. You just do the flow chart, right? That's the good news. The bad part is we don't really know what we did. We just followed the flow chart, and there was no real thinking. There was real no logic. You're just like, okay, whatever. I'll just do what you tell me to do, right? I'm okay with that sometimes. But we got to get better at it. But I don't mind doing these because you guys are getting used to proofs. I mean, you're not very – proofs right now are pretty shaky, aren't they? So it's okay to have a flow chart to tell you what to do. It is. Eventually, we're going to have to do these on our own, so why not take some easy help? Okay, so turn the page. Here's the second part. It's a paragraph proof. So again, all of the answers to our proof are in this paragraph. The answers are here. We don't have to think a whole lot again. We just have to say, what are they trying to tell us? How can I write that into a two-column proof? I don't have to do a lot of strategizing. The strategy has been done for us. Okay? So this is a paragraph proof. So let's take a look first. Angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles. Okay, I see that. Prove angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, okay? Well, they are by vertical angle theorem, but why are they going to? They're going to go through the long haul thing. All right, let's do it anyway, because I would go straight to step done, vertical angles, right? But anyway, they're going to prove why vertical angles work, okay? So let's go. I want to do this proof with you so you can see how paragraph proof works. All right, so let's go ahead and do our statements and our reasons, right? And our reasons. Step one, step one. So the paragraph proof goes along like this. Angle one and angle three are vertical, so they form a intersecting lines, okay? So I'll put down our given first, right? Our given has to be angle one and angle three are <coughs> vertical angles. Sorry, this, I'll try and get neater. Oh, vertical angles, and that's obviously given. Okay, let's read this. Intersecting lines, so a linear pair. So that's the next step. Step two's got to be here. Linear pair, okay? So I'm going to say step two. So angle one and angle two are <coughs> linear pairs. And I may as well also say that two and three are linear pair, right? All in the same step. Angle two and angle three are linear pairs pairs, okay? Definitional linear pairs, right? By the linear, oh, they even tell us by the linear pair theorem. I didn't know there was a linear pair theorem. I guess there is. I would have put definitional linear pair, but okay. Linear pair theorem. See, you can't remember all your theorems, can you? That's why we use our notes. Okay, good. Now, they're going to say, here's our next step. They talk about angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary, and angle 2 and angle 3 are supplementary. So that's got to be our next step. Step 3, it's got to be angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. And we're going to say angle 2 and angle 3 are supplementary. And they're even going to give me my reason, probably. Um, doesn't really say, but we can say by you know, definition of a linear pair is really what I would say. Definition of a linear pair. All right, linear pairs are supplementary. Or there's some theorem out there that says linear pairs are supplementary. Okay, finally, step four, they give it to us. Say, okay, um, they're going to say that they are congruent by the congruent supplement theorem. We, in fact, we got that one, I think, on Friday or Thursday, so we can go straight to angle one. It's congruent to angle three, step four, and it's got to be by the congruent supplement 
theorem, okay? So these are not very hard. However, you will never have to do all of this. I'll tell you why. First of all, boom. We already have the vertical angle theorem, so I could have done this in two steps. Two steps. One, vertical angle theorem, they're congruent, right? We already got that. I didn't need to do all this, but they wanted to show you a paragraph proof. Boom. We just learned this theorem, right? This could have been a two-step proof. They're proving our theorems, all right? Not too bad. Okay, so we still have plenty of time. This is why, again, my... Here, I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop recording.